Assalamu alaikum everyone. I am Nafim Hassan, currently studying in BSc in Prosthetics and Orthotics, first year. Today we will learn about the gait analysis and we will discuss about the different joint angles, ground reaction force and movement caused by them, and different kind of muscle contraction at the different phases of gait. Before we learn the main things, we have to know about some basic informations of which are what is gait, the phases of gait, and how ground reaction force is creating the movement at different joints and different kind of muscle contraction. First, if we talk about gait, gait is the normal walking pattern followed by an individual. Basically, everybody has a different gait pattern. Then, if we talk about the phases of gait, mainly the gait is divided into two main phases stance phase and swing phase. Stance phase is again divided into five sub phases called initial contact, loading response, mid distance, terminal distance, and pre swing. Again, swing is subdivided into three sub phases called initial swing, mid swing, and terminal swing. Then, if we talk about the ground reaction force, basically, it is the reaction force given by the ground when we apply our body weight on the ground as a force. This ground reaction force is mainly responsible for creating the movement at different joints. When this ground reaction force cross these joints anteriorly, it creates flexion in the hip, extension in the knee and dorsiflexion in the ankle. If this ground reaction force crosses the joints posteriorly, then it creates extension in the hip, flexion in the knee and plantar flexion in the ankle. Now if we talk about the different type of muscle contraction, uh, there is mainly two type of muscle contraction, one is isometric and another one is isotonic. In the isometric, uh, there is no movement and in the isotonic, the isotonic is subdivided into two parts, one is concentric contraction and one is eccentric contraction. In the concentric contraction, we can see the shortening of muscle during the movement and in the eccentric contraction, we can see the lengthening of muscle. Now if we talk about the different angles in the different phases of gait, then first we have initial contact. In the initial contact, we have 20 degree of hip flexion, 2.2 degree of knee flexion and 11 degree of plantar flexion. Then we have loading response. In the loading response, we have 9.1 degree of hip flexion, 5 degree of knee flexion and 15.1 degree of plantar flexion. In the mid stance, we have 0 degree of hip flexion, 6.1 degree of knee flexion and 12.7 degree of plantar flexion. Then in the terminal stance, we have 2 degree of hip extension, 4.4 degree of knee flexion and 2.2 degree of ankle dorsiflexion. In the pre-swing, we have 2.9 degree of hip extension, 45.4 degree of knee flexion and 20.4 degree of ankle plantar flexion. Now we have our initial swing where we have 8.6 degree of hip flexion, 56.8 degree of knee flexion and 35.1 degree of ankle plantar flexion. Then in the mid swing we have 20.7 degree of hip flexion, 27 degree of knee flexion and 9.5 degree of ankle plantar flexion. Now the last phase of gait terminal swing we have 20.2 degree of hip flexion, 9.6 degree of knee flexion and 10.3 degree of ankle plantar flexion. Previously, we already explained about ground reaction force and how it creates movements at different joints. Now, we will directly discuss about the movements at different phases of gait. In the initial contact, the ground reaction force cross the hip anteriorly, the knee anteriorly and the ankle posteriorly. So, it creates flexion in the hip, extension in the knee and plantar flexion in the ankle. So, it creates a clockwise rotation in the hip clockwise rotation in the knee and an anticlockwise rotation in our ankle. In the loading response phase, our ground reaction force crosses the hip joint anteriorly and crosses the knee joint and ankle joint posteriorly. So it creates flexion in the hip, flexion in the knee and plantar flexion in the ankle. It creates a clockwise rotation in our hip and anticlockwise rotation in our knee and an anticlockwise rotation in our ankle. In the mid distance phase, the ground reaction force posteriorly cross the hip and anteriorly cross the knee and ankle. So it creates extension in the hip, extension in the knee and dorsiflexion in the ankle. So it creates 
an anticlockwise rotation in our hip and a clockwise rotation in our ankle and our knee. In the terminal stance, the ground reaction force act same as the mid-stance phase. In the P-swing phase, ground reaction force posteriorly cross the hip and knee and anteriorly cross the ankle joint. So it creates extension in the hip, flexion in the knee and dorsiflexion in the ankle. So it creates an anticlockwise rotation in our hip and knee and a clockwise rotation in our ankle. Now if we discuss about the contraction of muscle at the transition period of phases then at the first transition from initial contact to loading response we can see a shortening of muscle it means there is a concentric type of muscle contraction then in the second transition of mid stance to terminal stance we can see a elongation of muscle that means here a uh, eccentric muscle contraction is happening if we notice at the third transition from pre swing to initial swing we can see the uh, shortening of muscle that means there is another concentric type of muscle contraction at the last transition of the phases of gait from mid swing to terminal swing we can see an another elongation of muscle that means another eccentric types of muscle contraction is happening in this phase in this video you can see which muscles are acting at the different phases of gait and how they are acting Now if we discuss about the goal of phases of gait then the first goal is to position the limb to start the stance in the initial contact phase. Now if we talk the goals of loading response phase there are three goals they are shock absorption, weight bearing stability and preservation of progression. Then the goals of mid distance phase are progression over the stationary foot and the limb and track stability. Then the goal of terminal stance phase is progression of the body beyond the supporting foot. The goal of pre-swing phase is to position the limb for swing. Then we have our initial swing phase which goal is to clear the foot of the floor and advancement of the limb from its trailing position. Then the goal of mid-swing phase is the limb advancement and the clearance of the foot from the floor. Then the last phase is terminal swing and which goal is complete limb advancement and prepare the limb for stance again. So there are some basic information about gait analysis which we generally use to identify uh, individual's gait pattern. Uh, so that's for all today. Uh, thanks for watching.